Yes, a yo-yo. It might seem far-fetched at first, but after you hear my process, it will all make sense. I hope. So, let's get right into it. It all started with trying various ways to create an air dash over the past few months, eventually landing on a punch-style air dash. It worked, it was intuitive, and it was even fun to use, but it wasn't quite what I was looking for. It felt like there was something out there that could be way more interesting. And while I was researching about movement, you know what came up every single time? Coming in at number 25 is the grappling hook from 007 Agent Under Fire. Coming in at number 24 is the grapple hook from Forspoken. Yes, coming in at number 23 is the lightning tether and lightning hook from Infamous 2. Coming in at number 21 is the grapple hook from Call of Duty The Best Warfare. Coming in at number 20 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 19 is the grapple hook from Zero Shadow Strike. Coming in at number 18 is the grapple hook from Jazz of Life. Coming in at number 19 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 20 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 21 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 22 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 23 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 22 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 23 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 22 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 23 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. Coming in at number 22 is the grapple hook from Titanfall. And thus, I came up with the idea of extendable arms. You are a robot after all. And lucky for me, I had already prototyped that exact mechanic a couple of years ago. Okay, so that's already quite a bit more interesting. It could be used for movement, it could be used for hitting enemies, grabbing collectibles, all kinds of things. And thematically it's fitting, you are a robot after all. But this video was not titled, I added extendable robot arms to my VR game, so why is that? Well, I kept getting more and more feedback about the player character visuals. Can I also play as a human? Can I also play as myself? And I don't know about you, but I don't have any experience being a robot. And the robot model made it feel like you were playing as a random character without a backstory or context, instead of instantly feeling like you were playing as, well, yourself. So I decided that I will redo the player character as a more human-like character in the future. Uh, oh, okay, well, may maybe this was a bad idea after all. Anyway, customization will be important, and just like in Splatoon, you will find various shops with their own unique style. After all, you should be able to make the character truly look and feel like you want them to. I cannot wait to see your questionable fashion choices in this game too. <laughs> But what about the name of the game? Realm of Robots without any robots? Well, let's just say there's still quite a bit of robots. And I have a lot of exciting world building going on behind the scenes, so all will be revealed in time. Anyway, all of this means that extendable robot arm ID does not really work well anymore, as you might choose to have a regular human hand as customization instead. So what if we had like a, a nifty little gadget? That, that has a bit of that street meets tech meets maybe your dad's garage kind of vibe to it. Well, that's when I came up with the magnetic yo-yo. Here's how it works. Hold the grip and trigger button to summon your yo-yo. Make a throwing motion and release the buttons to throw it. During this time, it can collide with enemies, objects or grab collectibles. It will then reel back to your hand, allowing you to throw it again. Now that's already pretty cool, but wait. There's more. You can also pull on it to launch yourself towards a yo-yo, opening up entirely new ways to move throughout the city. All of this was inspired by games like Penny's Big Breakaway, check that game out by the way, and Bridget in Guilty Gear. Both are games that use yo-yos in interesting ways for movement. In the end, this mechanic is simple to use, intuitive, thematically fitting, but also opens up a lot of skill expression for the player. Quite an exciting mechanic, is it not? If you're as excited as I am about Round for Robots, why not show it off with a day one supporter pack? It starts at just 3 euros a month, but of course you can always give more. It does not give any pre-order bonuses or exclusive content because I hate that kind of thing, but what it does give you is your name in the credits of the game and an exclusive Discord role so you can show everyone you were here since day one. And of course, you right now watching the video also helps a ton, so thank you for your support. Okay, back to the topic at hand. So the yo-yo is pretty awesome, but sadly it does not feel quite right to add it to the game. I want Round for Robots to be more of a grounded kind of game, a bit like Mirror's Edge. Where every time you jump a gap, you should feel, whew, I just made it. 
But by introducing a mechanic like the yo-yo, you can just fly anywhere you want. And adding a cooldown to the yo-yo is not going to fix such a fundamental design flaw. So I decided to scrap the mechanic for now. And that decision is why I still wanted to make this devlog. To show that you can program something that works, you can design something that's fun, and you can even make it look cool, but even then, it can still clash with the core identity of your game. For example, I could add guns to the game, I could make them even fun to use, but would you rather have guns or tricks in the game? A game only has a limited design space, so to speak, and I'd rather fill that with things that fit with the core identity of the game. To really make you feel like you're in a world of, of Jet Set Radio and Sonic combined. Something new, something fresh. So, what is next? I think it's about time to start visually filling in a bit of the world around for robots. Fix some bugs with the core movement system and finally start getting closer to that playtest. If you want to join those playtests, head on over to the hideout at Discord, link down below, and click on this little button down here to be notified when the first official playtest goes live. Make sure to not miss your chance. And that about wraps up this devlog. It's a bit different than usual, but I want to show off all the experimentation and features that also do not make it into the game, because there's always plenty of that too, and I think it's interesting to showcase that. If you want to see what other features might make it into the game, why not check out this playlist over here. It's full of interesting devlogs about the process of Round for Robots. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time. Grappling hook.